So let's take a look at the UI on ZBrush for iPad. We're going to break down the top bar, the sidebars, and the bottom bar and the widget. So on the top, you can see you have your home screen, your save options, then your import and export buttons, the name of your project on the center top. Then you have the undo history, the customization tab, the help button, and the settings button. Now let's break down the sidebars. So on the right hand side, we have access to our palette button, which allows you to access basically all of the menus that are available within ZBrush iPad. Then right next to it, we have the subtool palette, which is specifically under the tool palette subtool. So it's an easy way to access all of your subtools. And you can switch which subtool you have active. So now you can see I am just sculpting on the eye. Then we have our BPR button, which allows us to, to just take a quick render. Then the perspective button, so you can turn on and off perspective. The grid button, which you can see it turns on and off the grid. And any button that has that little arrow icon on the bottom left corner of the button can be long pressed. So if I long press this perspective button, you see I can change my focal length and the field of view, for example, on the floor button or grid button, you could change the amount of grids that you have. So you can have a grid for all three coordinates. Then you have your symmetry button, which allows you to sculpt symmetrically. The local symmetry button, and you can turn on and off dynamic mode. The fit button, which means that if your model is away from view, you can just click this and it will fit into your camera. You have your polyframe button. With a whole press, you can turn on and off the wireframe or the line and the fill or the polygroups. You have your transparency button, the ghost button, which allows your brushes to ignore transparent objects and the solo button, which basically isolates the subtool that you have selected. Now on the left hand side, we have the brush palette, which lets you access all of the brushes that you have available on ZBrush or iPad. And you can see we've packed all the brushes neatly into folders. Then on the stroke palette, you can change the way the brush interacts with the model or the surface. So you can do a clay buildup like this, which is freehand but you can also drag erect a single stroke of that brush and etc. You also have access to your alphas. This controls the actual shape of your brush. In the textures palette, you can access a multitude of textures, materials, which includes standard and matte cap materials, the color palette, which allows you to tweak and pick a color for your model and pick a color for your brush as well. The MRGB button, which allows you to control the intensity of the color you're applying to your model. And also if you're applying a material color or a material and a color at the same time. Then you have your focal shift, which is basically a fall off of the influence of the brush. Then you have the draw size, which is the size of your brush. You can turn on and off dynamic. Then you have the intensity or Z intensity, which allows you to tweak the strength of your brush. So if I go up to 100, let me just change this back to freehand. And you can see even by tapping very lightly, I'm already affecting a lot. But if I tone this down to like one, even if I press really, really hard, it's barely sculpting anything. And then obviously you have your undo and redo buttons. You can also access your undo history over here on the top. And you can see, you can just scroll back and forth between your undo history. And that is it for the left bar. So on the bottom bar, we have an assortment of most commonly used brushes. And we also have our gizmo, the Dynamesh button, Sculptures Pro, Ziri Mesher, Subdivision Levels, and Live Booleans. Now, let's talk a little bit about the modifier wheel. So the custom modifier wheel is this little round widget that could just press and hold that middle point with those little dots and just move this around and place it wherever. The left button in your modifier wheel is your masking button, which allows you to paint a mask. The top one is the smoothing button, so I'm smoothing my surface. 
The right button is your quick menu button or your spacebar. And the bottom one is the alt key or option key, which means it will reverse the influence of your brush. So if I'm sculpting, let me just raise my Z intensity over here. So if I'm sculpting like this, and now I press and hold this bottom button, I'm sculpting in the opposite direction. You can also press and hold one of these buttons and then slide your finger over to basically select multiple of these buttons at once. So I can do this and then press with my other fingers, the other buttons. And technically I can even hold all of the buttons at once. Another thing that I wanted to mention is when you go over to your palette button, you can also just go over here and tap and hold that little icon on the top with the small little dots, and then just drag this over to wherever you want. And you can place this small little palette wherever you want as well. So we've went through the entire basics of the ZBrush iPad UI. There's going to be a lot more to talk about when we're talking about customization with this UI. So stick around for the next couple of videos and I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you in the next video.